This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and 50. Oh. <laughs> Charlie's got quite the fan base. Oh. I'm chopped liver, but that's fine. Like your two-year-old swears and yes. like you, you're trying so hard not to giggle. That's probably the most flaming liberal thing I'm ever going to say. <laughs> What if secretly the mayor of Idaho Falls is a vigilante at night uh -huh. and that's where the car comes out? IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. On this episode, more Hawk Tua. <laughs> I saw a parody. We're gonna hop to a the hop gonna, to a? Yeah. <laughs> I saw a parody video where uh, it was to the tune of Hallelujah, Leonard Cohen's. Funny. Oh. Hawk to a. Yes. Hawk <laughs> <laughs> to a. Uh, yes, we did find out who pulled the senior prank that Mike remembered last episode. Also, Teton Pass opened already again. Uh, Local News 8 made quite the boner last week. <laughs> and a documentary about Idaho called... What else? Potato. Yeah. <laughs> you may have noticed it's always late at night here at IFAF. The lights are down low, the kids have gone to bed, and the adults are talking. Uh, and, and we talk like that here. I'm saying this because we have a bunch of new followers this week and oh. subscribers, too. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, nice. we'll get into why, uh -huh. I think. Okay, I'm down. Later on in the episode. but um, and, and you may have noticed our hot new intro. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. Courtesy of Matt Hill at Aerialize Visuals. Mm -hmm. He does some great drone work. Like, he blew my mind, man. Yeah. I kind of couldn't believe how well edited that um, whole thing fit together. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you saw the run down the train tracks with the water tower in the Isn't background so and cool? out the O in the Idaho Falls water feature at Broadway and I-15. It was... Mm -hmm. Matt, you are... Incredible, dude. So I actually saw him start to post some drone work on Facebook, and I was like, that's our guy. Right. That's our dude. That like, And so I messaged him and said, what would it take? Mm -hmm. And he messaged me back going, yeah, I'll do it, dude. <laughs> right. And he was so cool and cash about it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. just the nicest guy. Matt, thank <laughs> you. You are just amazing, bro. Aerialized visuals. And he's just getting started. Like, like he's that's the kind of eye he's got. Mm -hmm. He's just getting into I mean, he's obviously been flying drones for a while. Right. But he's just starting to businessize it. Yeah. Well, and I know he's done other um visual arts based yes. stuff. For a long time. Yeah. So he's got like the perfect background for something like this and then happened, I think, to pick up uh drone flying as a hobby, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw on Facebook that he lost one. Oh, like bummer. right before we were going to shoot. Right, yeah. And I'm like, oh, bummer, dude. Rip your drone. And he's like, that's okay. I have others. Right. <laughs> so I can't imagine the kind of arsenal that he has. <laughs> so when I first messaged him, I was like, hey, dude, uh, can we just throw a couple of your shots in with our intro? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah. And then he messaged back and said, well, looking at your color space, I know that I need to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. Oh, we got guy, a professional on yeah, our hands. <laughs> we got a badass over here. <laughs> this guy's way out of my league. So I'm uh -huh. surprised he even did it, but he did. And it yeah. looks amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not even sure you can Google him yet. That's how brand new this endeavor is. Aerialized visuals. But I'm you sure heard you'll... it here first, first, folks. That's right. <laughs> we are on the bleeding edge of what's going on in Idaho Falls. But he asked right. me to describe the show. Uh-huh. And I described it to him like I just did, you mm -hmm. know? The uh, the kids have gone to bed and the adults are talking now. Yeah. And so we do make dick jokes from time to time. That's what keeps it fun and spicy. In fact, I think that's one of the reasons we got so many new followers, at least on Facebook this week. Oh, yes. I think that is why. Let's just uh, show you the, <laughs> the Local News 8 video about how dry it is this summer and how you should be careful with fireworks. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing is you showed me just the the big picture of it. Uh -huh. uh, and I was like, yeah, it does look really dry. What do you mean? I felt so innocent in that moment. And then you zoomed in for me and showed me, you know, what was really going on. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> let's, let's zoom in for you and show you what's really going on <laughs> there. So we shared it in the Life in Idaho Falls page, mm -hmm. which we just talked about last episode. And um, the top comment was, it's hot as balls. Now back to you in the studio. <laughs> Man, I love smart asses on the internet. It's my favorite <laughs> thing. 
Uh, except for the Life in Idaho Falls admin. Her name is Bar. She, one of them. It's Barbara and Coleman. Uh-huh. I think I called him Colt in one episode. Sorry about that, Coleman. Mm-hmm. Um, like the lantern. Barbara and I have chatted a couple of times because, mm-hmm. you know, we always throw the podcast and I'm like, hey, I don't want to spam you. And she's like, no, you're cool. You're the least of our worries. Right. So I'm we're sure. on, I think we're on their nice list. Uh huh. And um, she just commented as the Life in Idaho Falls admin, Michael. <laughs> Which you hate. With an exclamation point. <laughs> it's not that I hate it. It's just that because I knew who was behind it. Right. Um, it shocked me into a state of immediate, oh, no, what did I do? What, right. Oh, I'm, I'm in trouble. Well, and to, For the first time in my adult life, maybe. Right. Well, and to clarify, what you hate is being called Michael because it makes you feel like you're in trouble. Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> Yeah. So I said, well, I'm just reporting the news. Yeah. <laughs> and then she made a joke and I knew we were cool. And I said, I do want to say, though, that I was pretty uh, shocked <laughs> seeing that uh-huh. uh, from another person. And she said, good. I used my mom voice. Mission accomplished. <laughs> That's so cute. I guarantee she was chuckling the entire time she was writing it. Kind of like when you like your two year old swears and like yes. you you're trying so hard not to giggle because if you do it's just going to keep them going. Yeah, yeah. If you're listening, we realize we haven't said what it is yet. It's Dick Graffiti mm-hmm. on a rock. Yeah, in a shot <laughs> for about uh, I'd say a good ten seconds. Yep, on it's, TV here in East Idaho. Mm-hmm. I bet if you had a big screen and you were that you were watching it on, you'd probably see it instantly. Yeah, because it's right at the bottom. Right. And. uh if I were local news eight, I would go and delete the footage from everywhere. Right. And then yeah, I'd have a second person go through and delete the footage from everywhere. Yeah. And get rid of that B roll altogether too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they call it. Here's your A roll is your mm-hmm. talent standing there reporting. Right. And your B roll is just stuff to play mm-hmm. while they're talking like we yeah. sometimes do. Well, and I guess I don't know if they necessarily, if it's like B roll in the sense it's like reusable stuff, but mm-hmm. You know, maybe they put it in a folder to use later. There's a D hole in your B roll. <laughs> but uh, I, I think we um, ought to name it. Oh, yeah? Maybe Peter Petroglyph. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. PD Graffiti. That's really good. <laughs> um, man, I feel like I had a really good one for that the other day, and now I don't remember what, what it was. What about- I was all hyped uh, up on caffeine. Dick Rock. <laughs> Cock Rock. Yeah. There we go. Better. That's better. Better. We got there. (laughs) It just took a second. You know, it reminds me a lot of that ship from Austin Powers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dr. Evil's ship, when it Mm -hmm. comes out of the volcano, they see it on the radar and say that it looks like a... Pecker! Oh, where? Wait, that's not a wood pecker. It looks like someone's... Privates! We have reports of an unidentified flying object. It is a long, smooth shaft, complete with two balls. And they just keep going. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. Okay, before we get to the follow-ups, let's break out the snacks. Yes, we've got all kinds of good stuff. Do We're we want to start with soda pops or uh, fruit snacks? Soda pops. Right. Okay. I've been so excited about these. I got these like a week ago, and they cost a pretty penny. I found them on Amazon of all places. Um, so these are the Barbie edition of the Olipop Peaches and Cream Soda. Yeah. Which also, funny thing that I just recently found out, so I'd never heard of this before. Apparently, it's like a super low-calorie, like, Heard of Olipop, never had one. Yeah, okay, so I've never even heard of them. But then when I found these, I was looking at Poppy and Pout for some reason, and I saw that they'd done a collab with Olipop. What? Which I thought was really funny. I think you know, it's the cutest to take out two letters from Lollipop. Right. And have your own brand of uh, soda pop. Well, honestly, Peaches and cream, brilliant huh? too. All right. Yeah, I'm really Let's, excited uh, about this one. Crack one open. And I just love the little iconography on it, the little Barbies with their sunglasses. Super cute. Yeah. Super summer. Uh-huh. You know? Super summer. And kind of retro 60s looking. Mm-hmm. How is it? 10 calories a can. Not bad. Ooh. Uh, 50 calories a can. Mm. That'll teach me to read something up close <laughs> with my glasses on. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty dang good. It's peachy and creamy. Yeah. Well, especially for 50 calories a can, I feel like that's less than a normal soda, right? What's, oh yeah. What's the, um, sweetener in this one? It actually doesn't doesn't say, say, it doesn't say the sweetener. I think it's like some weird, uh, mix of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is Olipop, does it have a special blend of herbs and spices or something? It looks like it does. 
Yeah, so it actually, it puts it on here, it calls it Ollie Smart. Oh, okay. Which I'm assuming that the sweetener must be in there, but I'm not seeing it. But huh. I'm also not reading it that closely. Next Nepal up. Nepal cactus. Whoa, okay. Welch's okay. red, white, and oh! blue snacks. Okay, so this kind of takes us back to that whole mixed berry debate that we were talking about. Yes. So are these just strawberries and blueberries? I'm having a bitch of a time getting this open. Usually I like to <laughs> they, they don't honor want the you company's in packaging. Right, but when they glue it down so hard that you've got to like strip one of the flaps. <laughs> oh, they're all, okay. I was going to ask you what color you wanted, Ooh, but they're all red, white, and blue. <laughs> sorry, the uh, the Olipop made me burpy. <laughs> uh, that's really good though. But it's a, I really it's a like nice how creamy it is. Peaches and cream burp. Yeah. So these are... Um, Welch's fruit snacks with real fruit, red, white, and nice. blueberry. Oh, I love cute. That. that is cute. cute. So, yeah, it looks like cherries, blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries on here. All right. Which, yeah, that that is a perfect combination of red and blueberries. Is cherry a berry? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> you know, I, I, saw, I have like two people on my feed named Carrie Berry. Really? And I think a third one that keeps getting recommended to me named Sherry Berry. <laughs> That's hilarious. Are they know. all related? I don't know. These remind me of being in uh, middle school back before. So I used to go to Taylor's Crossing when it was still Trailer's Crossing. So we didn't have a cafeteria. We all had to bring lunches from home. Was it called Trailer's Crossing? No, but we were all in trailers. <laughs> like it was literally a school made like uh -huh. each of the classrooms was an individual trailer. One more thing before the follow-ups. It's a little self-serving, but it's our show. Yeah. You, you may have picked up at the beginning of the episode. It's our 50th episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is so exciting. So we're counting it as our, our full-on anniversary on the same day as our country's anniversary. So yeah. that's pretty cool. We're going to celebrate our, I guess we're celebrating our anniversary, our B-Day. Mm -hmm. Right. On the USA B-Day as well. Mm -hmm. It's just because we're so patriotic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our, we were born on the 4th of July, baby. <laughs> and to be, so let's just talk about how this sort of came to be. I had wanted to do one when I got out of radio. I was in radio for a minute. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of radio, I was thinking, ah, you know, it'd be nice to do something. It was on my someday list. Right. And then, you know, been doing real estate for the last five years. But a couple of years, and, and for the first year. I put like mm -hmm. a one-year moratorium on anything radio-related. Right. Because it's one of those things that they just want to drag you back in. Right, like the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> I said no to everything. Mm -hmm. And then I thought it was, I don't know, fall of 2022. Mm -hmm. I thought, no, you know what? I could do something. Right. And I thought, why don't I just design it from the ground up? Mm -hmm. And it was just an idea. That's all it was. It was an idea forming itself in my head until Carly came along. And I was like, oh, it's too bad I didn't meet you back when I was in radio. <laughs> I remember when you first said that to me and I was so we flattered. We could have had a hell of a show. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, wait a minute. I've already had this idea. Let's do it. Right. So I think it was you that inspired me to actually take action. Mm -hmm. What are we going to call it? <laughs> What's it going to be about? Man, we went over that for weeks. Weeks. Yeah, we couldn't settle on anything for the longest time. And then I think it was you who finally said, what about IFAF? And I was like, ooh, that's good. It has a certain ring to it. It does. Well, what does it mean? <laughs> if you have to ask, it means Idaho Falls and Friends. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have to ask. It means exactly what you think it means. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, I... I actually have wanted to do podcasts for a long time now, but I have no technical know-how and no time <laughs> to learn any. Um, so it was really, it was kind of the perfect symbi uh, symbiotic relationship that we had where, you know, you had everything that I didn't. And I think that I gave you something to bounce off of. Yeah, there's no way I could do this on my own. It's kind of hard. You bring so much. In fact, I mean, most of the comments and I think fan base we have is for Carly. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially to those cringy uh, keyboard warrior white knights. Yeah, there are a couple of those. That, uh, you know, uh, th they'll say things like, uh, oh, one um, comment verbatim on YouTube was, more Carly, less Mike. Did you see that one? No, I didn't. And I replied, 
more water, less thirst. Right. <laughs> it was some dude with a That's gamer channel. Hilarious. But, but yeah, Carly's got quite the fan base. Oh. I'm chopped liver, but that's fine. No, that's fine. Well, come on. Without you, there'd be nothing. And I think where we were a year ago, too. I think it we looked were in like Disneyland. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I still hadn't figured out lighting. I was, We were still getting lighting in. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was rough. Yeah. It was rough. <laughs> I like how it is now. I'd love a wide shot, but we'll get there. Yeah. Yeah, we're working on it. We'll It'll be there. there eventually. We might set up a wide shot cam just mm-hmm. outside of these cameras so you can kind of see our little setup. We're basically in a corner. We're less than six, about six feet away from each other. Yeah, I would say Five, that. Five, maybe. Well, like, yeah, from chest to chest, about... Five yeah. feet. Yeah. I think that's about one Carly. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. But it's just been so great to watch our channel grow. And this is where we're being listened to. Here's a map of, this is just the download locations for our audio portion of the show. You can find us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That's mm-hmm. the big one people ask. Oh, are you on Spotify? Yep. Right. It kind of looks like Idaho Falls and Salt Lake are almost touching tips there, don't you think? <laughs> Yes, they do. But that goes to my point that Idaho Falls is sort of a mirror image of Salt Lake City. It really is. In the 90-minute corridor that is Salt Lake City, you've got Mm -hmm. the godless heathens in Ogden, (laughs) then Salt Lake City, you know, the base, Mm -hmm. and then the super religious part, Provo, where BYU is. Mm -hmm. In Idaho Falls, it's the opposite. The godless heathens are in Pocatello. Yes, I said that. I mean, yeah, it's a college town. Come on. Well, there's five counties from <laughs> south to north and also coincidentally alphabetically, Bannock, Bingham, Bonneville, <laughs> Jefferson, Madison. Uh, but yeah, the godless heathens in Pocatello, uh-huh. uh, then Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. I, I, we're the voice of reason, maybe. You know? Yeah, I, I think just, we're kind of middle of the road. The population base anyway, and then yeah. super religious in Rexburg. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the that's the two... Touching tips yeah, right there. I think it's sweet. Of East y- you can tell they love each other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's that's nice. great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Pride Month's <laughs> over, people. <laughs> Pride, Pride <laughs> Month can go on any can, month if you I ask can me. Hear the comments <laughs> now. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. Honestly, thank you so much for being the one that handles all of our social media. Because honestly, dude, I don't want to deal with any of that. It's. I think I've got a fairly tough skin anyway from, mm-hmm. from the biz. I had to get to that point. Right. Like mentally and emotionally. But See, I'm still so sensitive. I'm IDGAF. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's yeah, all right. I'll get there. All right, follow ups. Um, is Idaho more flammable than Wyoming? We sort of talked about that. Yes. And the Wait, answer is. Is it Wyoming or. Mo- oh, yeah. Because Sorry. Wyoming, they it's let the off the, has the, good ones. the yeah. big old fireworks. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I asked, I Googled like precip and stuff like that. But but I was like, no, why, why not just ask Chat GPT? Oh, good idea. And I said, is Idaho more flammable than Wyoming? And they said huh. yes and gave me some reasons and I don't remember oh, why. Okay. All right. So I think you win that one. Nice. Okay. That's yeah. Thank you. The point <laughs> to you. Yes, points. You know, I actually used ChatGPT for the very first time ever today. Okay. I get why people use it so much now because my goodness, it's... um, It's kind of fun. It's kind of great. What do well, you use it for? Uh, so I was using it to help a friend write a scholarship essay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I just, uh, you know, I didn't want to have to sit there for two hours typing something out when I was like, okay, really? All she needs are like good phrases and keywords and stuff like that. So I put in a prompt. It spat something out. I read through it and I was like, yep. Those are all the words I would have used. <laughs> now, did she like, you know, kind of make it her own? And that's because I know there's like AI detectors now, which I also told her. Okay. Yeah. So basically, when I sent it to her, I was like, hey, here's ca- so here's what J- Chat GPT spat out. Here's what I like about it. Here's what I don't. Here's how I think you should change it. Here's sort of the modifications that you should like. It was more sort of a. A sample, an example for her. Sure. You know, so that she could more easily get... Don't copy and paste. Right. But let this be... Right. But I mean, there are so many times when I was writing uh, essays for college, and I was just sitting there trying to think of like phrases and words and even like what structure it would look best in. And I, I spent like so long just rearranging things for no good reason when I could have just plugged it into that and had three different examples that I could have chosen from and then run from there. Yeah. You know? Nice. Yeah. Next follow-up, we talked about Jory Anderson's Bonneville High School graduation prank last episode. Yes, yeah. And I, I mentioned, you mentioned your prank. I mentioned one that I remember. Mm-hmm. And I wondered if it was Kevin. It was Kevin. 
Of course it was Kevin. He's the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> if you're just joining us, yeah, he, he, he texted me a picture of his lunch in London the other day. <laughs> Why is he in London? I don't know. <laughs> no one will ever know. Man, you know what? I want to shadow Kevin for one month. Yeah. Just to see what he's up to, because he seems just fascinating. He was eating octopus. <laughs> which I love. Which you love. Uh-huh. You in the deep. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And some, you know, squid... That works on two levels. Ink, rice. <laughs> uh-huh. And I just... <gasps> I love the squid ink. So, anyway... I don't know why it's so good, but it's so good. Have you ever seen that one uh, video of the girl who's like, she orders octopus at a restaurant and it inks on her because it's still alive? Oh, yeah. Gets it on her face and she's just trying to is wipe that it off. Is that real? Is that a real one? I think so. Or is that AI? Okay. I think that's real. Yes, yeah. yes. But it's funny too because the waitress also gets inked. Yeah. <laughs> so they're both walking around with just streaked black faces. And like when you try to get it off, it just smears it around. <laughs> so it just looks real bad. Serves you right for trying to eat a live animal, you weirdos. <laughs> I mean, I I personally would at least kill it. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> Murder it with a stone. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin says, here's the IFHS milk story. And he CC'd a friend, uh, also a mutual friend, uh -huh. and said, just so you know, I'm not making this up. That's hilarious. He brought a witness. So You're right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so for lunch, he had a milk, you know, those little cartons. He yeah. didn't finish it, so he put it in his locker to take home later. But it was Friday. He forgot. <gasps> the milk was there over the weekend. Monday, it started to smell. I have no idea who told me. Maybe it was Nathan. There's another one of our friends. Uh -huh. Now a high-powered attorney who, you know, has beating the city of Pocatello on his resume. Mm -hmm. But someone wondered how long it would keep as an experiment. <laughs> so this was an experiment gone wrong. Oh, so y'all are just a bunch of scientists. The teenage mind thinks, ah, oh, this is totally cool. <laughs> um, anyway, I wrapped it in aluminum foil and double ziplocked it. About two weeks later, it smelled again. Someone from art class had a small paint can, so I put it in there, and there was no smell. Oh, wow. Okay. That's when he completely forgot about it. Oh, funny. Uh, in this, So that was in the fall. In the uh -huh. spring, on another Friday, during a pep assembly, I was at the assembly because I was running the sound system, he says. Funny. He claims. <laughs> during that assembly, someone got into his locker, took the paint can, opened it, and stomped on it in the hallway. Okay, wait. Someone, so they're not saying it was Kevin. Right. It was just but it an was, amorphous someone. Yeah, and then at that point, I think I said it was a biohazard. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, the smell was just all the all through all the halls. <sighs> Teenage boys, man. Three more follow-ups till the last one, the Haktua girl. <laughs> um, Post Malone, we talked about him mm -hmm. and country crossover in general last episode. Right. He's coming to Salt Lake City with mm -hmm. the F1 Trillion Tour. The F1 Trillion is his new album that's not even released until August 16th. Right. So we don't even... And, and he's switching genres, at least for this album, Beyonce style. Okay. Uh, the album re releases August 16th. The show is for September 8th. Yeah. But I guess they're gambling that you've heard, Post Malone and Morgan Wallen, I had some help. Right. And love it enough... To buy tickets to this show, mm -hmm. link in post, and I just think that's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. Honestly, it's posty. I think he's going to be fine. I bet it'll be great. Yeah. Well, and also his country, I think even if you're going in there expecting hip hop, is still close enough that you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. You know? Remember Everlast from like yes. 1999? Yeah, like barely. He was in... <laughs> I don't know, House of Pain. Mm -hmm. And then he had his own little kind of album with acoustic guitar. Right. Kind of along the same vein. Mm -hmm. Kind of. 25 years later, music mm -hmm. and fashion being on a 25-year cycle. Right. Okay. Uh, Greg, our uh, good buddy Greg, said, oh, yeah, the Testicle Festival. Um, I actually had a poster. Here it is. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He was planning on giving it to one of his sons, but he only had daughters. Aww. So he gave it to his nephew. You'll see that it says, um, Testicle Festival, Montana's original. I had a ball, Rock Creek Lodge, Montana, which is in Clinton, Montana. 
Oh, funny. <laughs> anyway, also. Wow, that's that's cool, Greg. Thank what, you. What he really should have done is he should have hung on to it until he had a grandson. Oh, And yeah. then at like the gender reveal or something, <laughs> y- he whips that out. And that's how everyone knows. Brilliant. I, I know. It. Yes. <laughs> right? Good thinking. <laughs> yeah. If gender reveal parties are still a thing in a few years when he's a grandpa, I bet they will be. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, also, it's Anthony Starr, not Michael Starr, that plays Homelander. Right. And so I actually, I heard this. Do you know who Neil Brennan is? I know I know the name and I'm terrible with faces, so. He's a stand-up comedian. Uh, he's got a special called Blocks. Okay. Pretty funny dude. Dry. Uh-huh. And that's kind of why I like him is he's the opposite of me. Right, right. And now he's got a podcast. Anyway, I heard one of his guests messed something up. Oh, and yeah? I think I found a way we can do a correction right then and there on the spot. Will you just throw in some AI voice and some please stand by card I like that. on the video. Mm-hmm. And so you can know we messed up. Mm-hmm. We caught it before it launched. Right, right. Which is nice. And I wish there were some way that we could like pause the frame and then walk out with markers and Per's new groove style. Yes. You know? This is where we messed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by all accounts, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> but sort of along the same lines as our allegedly alarm right. that just plays in the background when we should have used the words allegedly. <laughs> yeah. Like, say, with Chad Daybell or Lori Vallow Daybell mm-hmm. or... Which now we don't have to. Um, Jody somebody... Jody Hildebrandt. Thank you. Mm-hmm. In Utah. And uh, Ruby... Goldstein. These two idiots meant to say Ruby Frankie. Right. Yeah, Ruby Frankie. That one. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the Hawk Tua girl. Yes. Okay. She's sort of a, a legend, like a, a myth now. Already? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody jumped on it on mm-hmm. the meme a week-ish ago. Right. Including parody news websites. Mm-hmm. Right. The Tippa County Tribune published a post saying that uh, she was a preschool teacher that got fired from her job. At Epstein Day School, by the way. It, oh, really? Yeah, that was the name of the school in it. If you read the post, it's hilarious. Uh-huh. The part that made me go, wait a minute, uh-huh. was when they said, yeah, all the preschoolers look up to her so much. And so when they saw that video, they just started spitting on things. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I scrolled up. Oh, this is a... This is a um, they don't say parody. What do they say? Um, satire. Satire website. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, she also doesn't have an agent, but she has made like, I don't know, $100,000 from merch sales so far. Which also, what a hustler. Good for her. She got in bed with Fathead. Yes. They make... Um, hats. Hats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's also got signed hats that you can get for only like 40 bucks. Yeah. So because we found out that she wasn't actually a preschool teacher... I, of course, started stewing on the question of, well, what does she do? And I was trying to look it up every which way. No idea still. Who is she? How old is she? Where does she live? And what does she do for a living? I'm kind of wondering if maybe she's like a student or something. And like, that's why it's not like, because, you know, she's not partying. She's relatively young. She's bar hopping with a buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That's Um, what I'm betting. But we did end up deciding to just look her up on Facebook. Yes. And what we found is, and here's what I'm betting. I'm betting the minute it came out and people contacted her, she was like, oh, shit, and turned all her social media private. Right. Started a new page. Mm-hmm. Because here's some photos. Here's some, this is her profile picture with a snake. Mm-hmm. Is that an anaconda? I don't know. <laughs> Their anaconda don't want none unless you <laughs> hawk to a son. <laughs> and some other photos. Yeah. But uh, it was created, you know, like June 20th. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, I remember we were looking at the pictures and we were like, whoa, this is her real page, apparently. And then I was like, wait a second. And she says <laughs> she lives in Lewisburg, Tennessee, but she's basically mm-hmm. just promoting the merch with Fathead. Right. Yeah. So. Which, like, that's what I would do if I was her, too. Also, can I just say how impressed I am by how, by how quick their production is? Yes. I mean, Boy, this, they banged yeah, it out. this has been under a month. And they were able to design, create, and send out hats already. Speaking of how fast they are, before we go to the break, let's give mad props to Dot. Holy cow, Teton right. Pass opened Friday. Uh-huh. Just one day shy of three weeks after the critical fail. Wild, huh? Let's look at some of this drone photos. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's impressive. I know, and... 
I know last time we talked about it, I was like, how are they even going to do this? Like, are they going to have to rebuild it? Are they going to, you know, take it down instead? And yeah, kind of crazy that they could get all of that work done that fast. And so, of course, the negative Nancys are on the internet saying, oh, but this, this, you know, First Street is under construction for three months. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you have to believe that Y dot put all hands on deck, <laughs> right, right, and Y dot get shit done. Apparently, for tourist season. Yeah, would you drive it? I'm not sure I would drive it. A lot of people else. have already driven it. You know, it'll kind of be like um those penguins that stand on the cliff and they push one in to see <laughs> if there are any like sea lions there to yeah. kill them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll I'll let another penguin jump in for now. <laughs> What's the expression? The early bird gets the worm. Uh, but the second mouse gets the cheese. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Summer is a great time to sell your home. So if you're ready to put your house on the market, we're here for you. The market changes quite a bit from year to year and season to season. One thing I've noticed with some sellers is they'll hear about their neighbor's experience six months ago and think that that still applies to them. And it isn't always necessarily the same as it was six months ago. That's why you need professionals to talk to. Get an updated market valuation for your home when you email info at ifafpod.com. That's right. We'll give it to you straight here on this podcast and as your realtors. That's info at ifafpod.com. We're brokered by Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. What are you laying down on the grill this 4th of July weekend for just you or your friends, your family, the whole neighborhood? You still have time to order from Virgin River Land and Cattle Company. Virgin River proudly ships to six states, Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, Nevada, and Oregon. They source local Angus and Angus crossbreeds fed on green Idaho pastures and finished with locally sourced corn and grain for a rich, beefy flavor to enjoy at a barbecue, Sunday dinner, or Fourth of July weekend. Find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook and drop promo code IFAF to save 15%. Are you thinking about doing a little thrift shopping this weekend? Make your first stop, Elsie's Closet. It's upscale resale. That means trendy fashion that's still budget-friendly. And it's not just to stop at the thrift. It's a whole vibe. I saw a cute message on the sidewalk sandwich board that said something like, hey, you may have a bad day, but at least your outfit can always be good. Short skirts, tank tops, crop tops. They've got everything for summer. And it's Idaho Falls' only thrift store by women for women. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off your total purchase. Do you want to impress your guests at your next summer soiree? If so, DIY Wedding and Event Rentals has you covered. Every little thing they do is just so thoughtful. They posted this last week, this ladder display. It's something you won't see at most events. It's great for photos. You can add lights or flowers, and it's a unique way to share special moments with guests. And don't forget, they can also rent that drink trailer to you as well, either fully stocked or you can stock it yourself. Items are renting fast for the summer. I bet they have room for you. Call or text 208-403-2040 to find out. 208-403-2040. DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Use promo code IFAF to save 15%. Oh, and while we're in plug mode... uh tetontshirts.com. Yeah, you want to move over that festive tie for a second? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice. You like I know. I thought that was nice that you got us some little accessories. Yeah. You know, I actually have a little accessory for Rango for the 4th of July, too. <gasps> no way. Hey, Rango. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> yeah. Call him on. I want to see it on. <laughs> you want me to try it? Yeah. Right now? Yeah, try it on. You got it. Okay. Senorito. You're the bean. Come here. Come here. Oh, he knows. He's like, Mom, I don't want to do a bit. Are we doing a bit? Oh my God, that's adorable. Doesn't he look like the most excellent presidential candidate? Yes. <laughs> Vote Rango. Hello, Mr. President. How are you? Buddy, you look fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you do. Kisses. <laughs> he was like, am I going to get a kiss out of this? Right. <laughs> did you watch any of the presidential debates? No, oh, it's too depressing. <laughs> I did a little bit. And I'm so glad the next morning I watched the on YouTube the uh, John Stewart clip. I'm so glad he's back for this. Uh-huh. He's come out of retirement, and he it was interesting to see him because let's face it, when Trump was president, it was a one way nonstop partisan onslaught mm-hmm. at Trump by everybody. Right, Fallon Kimmel. Well, of course, Fallon is Switzerland, and he's got to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Kim, like they were all, it was all just Trump hate. But the thing I appreciated about Jon Stewart is, and he's always been, I think, mostly the voice of reason. Right. But he was an equal opportunity offender for both mm-hmm. parties. Right. Yeah. And I loved that. That's yeah. all I want. Just give me the jokes. Mm-hmm. I don't want I don't know your politics. I don't, no one cares. Right. Right. Well, and at the end of the day, I, I think I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. If at any point you are deifying a candidate or you think that they have all of the answers for everything, you're wrong, buddy. You're looking at all of this all wrong. Okay. We're choosing the person who's going to do the most things that you want done. And that's it. Yeah. You know? So we went from Teton t-shirts to festive decorations yeah. to Rango's collar to uh, John Stewart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the presidential debates to John Stewart. Right. But I do want to mention tetontshirts.com. It'll redirect you to our Teesprings um, mm-hmm. store. Right. But they have all sorts of, if you're looking, this is the season for Idaho Falls tourist t-shirts. Right. And they're all cool. We've got some great ones. See, and now I personally really like any kind of like retro vibe. In case you can't tell, <laughs> I'm, I know, shocking. But man, I love the retro uh, landmarks on there. I think they're so super cool. And I know that there's one in the works that I'm really excited to yes, see. Yes, it's coming. Mm-hmm. I I had my graphic guy do a couple other projects oh, first, wait. but oh, it'll, before the summer's out, Okay, we'll good. have it. That's what I want to hear. It'll be the third and final in our vintage trifecta mm-hmm. trilogy thing. All right. Oh, uh, water tower update real quick. Let's, I love doing this because we're, and I think we're going to do this every time and just keep adding on to it. Here was the first time Kinda I visited. like what they're doing. But I'm yeah, exactly. <laughs> first time we visited. Second time we visited. Third time. Couldn't get it all in. Had to move the camera up. <laughs> backed up. And then here's the fourth time. The most recent time. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I do want to get up close. Right. So I did, and come to find out it's being built by Phoenix Fabricators and Erectors. Oh. So well done, you guys. That's yeah. a, a very, we have the beginnings of a very impressive erection. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now that being said. All right, sorry. One thing I kind of would like you to do next time you go and take pictures, if you can, um, is I'd like you to go to the old water tower too and get a picture from the base looking up. Okay, yeah. So that we can see if the new one looks as impressive. Because I have a feeling the new one's going to be taller, right? Are you saying we should have a measuring contest? I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But where do you measure from? The base. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Always from the base. Everyone knows that. Okay. If you're going past that, you're cheating. Right. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't count the little extra on the end either. But did you see in that video that it looks like they <laughs> looks like they put like a just a regular size door and then like a garage door in the oh. bottom, and so I'm sure that's for something. I don't know what. Probably maintenance, I would assume. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they store the Batmobile. Ooh. Okay. What if secretly the mayor of Idaho Falls is a vigilante at night, uh-huh. and that's where the car comes out? Yeah. I mean. That'd be super cool, right? The Casper Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that would be a great place to park the IFAF mobile if we ever get one. <laughs> Ooh, can it be a smart car? The IFAF. Just because I think they're funny. AMC. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, That's hot. A smart car would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or a little mini. Ooh, I would do a mini. Yeah. That'd be fun. Or soup. <laughs> you know, I love a soup. <laughs> so we're mostly a local podcast, but we do love to talk about stuff when it affects us here in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I was really happy to see last week, the FTC, that's the Federal Trade Commission, has made non-compete agreements unenforceable. Good. And banned them moving forward. You bet your ass that's good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I actually had to sign one from a job a couple of times ago. And I I have a theory on why they do it. It's because they know that they suck. It's because they know that their work environment is shit and that other people can offer more and that your employees would be happier there. Exactly. And so they want to create a situation where they can't leave unless they want to change fields. Thankfully, I did. But, man. And let's. If you don't know, let's talk about non-compete agreements for just a minute because mm-hmm. I had to sign them when I was in radio right. as well. Mm-hmm. They basically say, hey, you can't quit and walk across the street to our competition. Right. And in the same capacity. Mm-hmm. And what we found, so I uh, I was on both sides of contracts in my career. Right. At the beginning, I was signing them. And then at the end, I was putting them together with help from our legal team. And 
what we generally found was even back then, a few years ago, non-compete clauses in contracts were pretty much unenforceable because you just can't prevent somebody else from earning a living in this country. I mean, you would think, yeah. Now, I'm sure that there will still be clauses like, um, hey, you can't take our trade secrets across the street sure. to our competitor. Mm -hmm. This ruling is going to be great for the worker bee. Right. For, you know, the common man. Mm -hmm. Us. Yeah. Except for like some senior executives, but even that's going to go away soon. Good. Uh, people making over like $150,000 a year. So we're, we're not your legal team. Mm -hmm. Consult your attorney. Yeah. If well, you've got a question. Well, and also, like, it's really the people who are making less than that who get totally screwed by stuff like exactly. this. Exactly. You no longer have to stay at your job because your employer sucks. Right. And that's that's probably the most flaming liberal thing I'm ever going to say. <laughs> right. Well, and also, you know? with the whole $150 thing. So... I think it's kind of interesting that that's a cutoff because I actually have had a couple of friends who've been in lawsuits with because of a non-compete. And they were always like the bottom of the totem pole, like barely even like a bit like barely even a blip on anyone's radar employee, you know, and then they left to a different place, not even like maliciously. Right. Not because they were like, you know, trying to play the field or anything. Like one left just on her own because she was dealing with mental health stuff and then went somewhere else after because she there were no openings at her last place. You know, and they tried to hit her with one. And that's the thing. You even said yourself that nine times out of ten, they're not really all that enforceable anyway, even before this. And the attorneys make money. Exactly. That's the thing. The whole point isn't to actually enforce it. It's just to pound that person into the ground and fuck them so financially that they can't do anything else. It's ridiculous. And I think this is a huge win for employees. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to, on the same vein, I'd like to bring up one other thing too. Mm -hmm. Can employers ask you in a job interview how much you made at your last gig? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to tell them. And it's such a shitty, shady practice that it's been banned in 22 mm -hmm. states and 23 different cities. Right. Right. So I actually had that question asked to me in um, one of one of my job interviews, and I knew that that could be a potential question. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I'd rather talk about the value that I bring to the company. Right, which is such a good move, by the way. And they later, I later found out from a trusted manager that um, they viewed that as me being evasive. And I thought, well, if you're going to be invasive then I can be evasive. Right. You don't ask somebody that question. Now, it's not banned in Idaho yet. No. They still can. And if they do, they're assholes. Right. They really are. Hey, uh, has it occurred to you that maybe the reason I'm applying for a new job is I want to make more money? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. I think a lot <laughs> of the time they're sort of trying to figure out what what's the least we can get away with giving exactly. them. Exactly. You know? And so it's that's not necessarily exactly that there's... Doing. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not necessarily that they don't want to give you more than you were making. They just don't want to give you very much more. What, they're, what they really should ask is, hey, tell me how much you're making now so that I can decide in my mind what your worth is. Right. For exactly. me. Here's some sad news. JB's restaurant in Rexburg closing after 51 years. Yeah, what a bummer. I feel yeah. like there are so many like institutional restaurants that are suddenly not going to be a thing anymore. Denny's gone from East Idaho. Right. What's up with breakfast places in particular? Yeah, I don't know. Did hmm. you know I did some looking into Smitty's for whatever reason? Uh -huh. Do you know that they started as a single restaurant in Seattle? Right. Spread across mostly the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. or the Northwest. And now there's only there's one in Idaho. There's one in, I don't know, Walla Walla, Washington somewhere. Oh, cool. <laughs> but they're big in Canada still. Right. Yeah. I do remember you saying the thing about Canada. I thought yeah. that was funny. And at some point, Perkins bought a bunch of Smitties and they became mm -hmm. Perkins instead. Oh, okay. And we have both the Smitties and a Perkins. I we think do. we do great on breakfast. Abra's. Yeah, we do, actually. It's fantastic. My mm -hmm. uh, rocket oh. scientist brother was in town. Mm-hmm. 
We went there. I do love me some Abra's. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. You know, I will say, I wonder if part of why re- uh, breakfast restaurants aren't doing so hot is because food prices are so insane that people can only afford two meals a day. Yeah, you know, <laughs> So yeah. they're, just, they're just like, ah, I guess I'll skip breakfast. Got to give up the pancakes and sausage <laughs> and do a little intermittent fasting while I'm at it, too. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I was sorry to see you go. <laughs> I, this is a video I sent Carly this week. This actually happened. I was at Country Corner. Uh huh. Anybody know Country Corner? Been here for years on the corner of First and Ammon. Mm-hmm. Used to be way out in the country. I know. And yeah. now not so much. No, it's not at all. So I was there. I'm not sure what I was getting. I think um, I was coming back or going to uh, a showing or something, getting some smart water. And I heard a voice, and it was obviously a little girl saying, Do you like ducks? So I made my selection. I looked over and there's this little orphan. Um, wait, an orphan or like a yeah, ragamuffin? I, yes, both. <laughs> okay. I, like like I little, um, uh, you know, Oliver Twist saying, please, sir, can I have some more? <laughs> Could not have been more than 10. Uh-huh. Yeah. She had uh, street dirt from London on her face. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, I said, yeah, I like ducks. <laughs> and she's she held up this. Take a look. <laughs> and listen. Like five bucks, little duckling, and you, you heard her. So, her mom and then her other sister, and mm-hmm. she wasn't an orphan because I there right. was her mom, <laughs> but they're all like wearing swimsuits. Oh, yeah. Oh, so they were just having a good time, having a great magical summer day. Oh, Probably had just been at the Ammon pool. I hope they didn't kidnap that duck from a canal. <laughs> no, what you hear is the mom saying, Yeah, you can get them at Cal Ranch for like five bucks. Oh, yeah. And that was cute as hell. And thank oh, you so the much. Best. I love that. And of course, I like ducks. <laughs> and I love that you showed me your little ducky. That's just sweet. We only have a couple things left. Should we talk about baby reindeer? I'm cool to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. I don't see why not. Boy, it was weird. It's a limited series on Netflix. It's eight episodes or seven? Seven. Seven episodes. Seven, I know. And they're half an hour each. Yeah. You can get through it so fast. Based on a true story. And do I have mm-hmm. this right? Acted by the guy who wrote it. Yes. He was a stand-up comedian. Mm-hmm. And without giving too much away, it was a stalking incident or a series mm-hmm. of incidences mm-hmm. over several years that happened to him. Right. Wow. Yeah, which it's kind of, it, it's sort of weird to see something like that so condensed. Because the thing is, like you were saying, it, it happens over a course of so long. And we binged watched it in like two days. Right, yeah. right. Um, but like, yeah, seeing all of those incidences lined up as closely as they were, you sort of question like, why didn't he do something sooner? But when you, you know, take a step back and remember, like, this is happening over days and weeks, and there are good moments where it's really not bad, and then there are these weird moments that you're not really sure how to take because there were those good moments, and it's just such an interesting look at that sort of interaction. Because when you hear stalker, you you really have a very specific picture in your mind. Mm-hmm. And when it's, like, kind of a buddy who just wants to be your buddy a little too much, then it kind of changes that whole right, yeah. perception. What I think is weird is in the, I think in the show, the stalker's name is Martha. Yeah. And his name is Donnie Dunn, even though that's not his name IRL. Right. But the woman who he based the character of Martha on has actually come forward, Mm -hmm. revealed herself, gone on talk shows, and sued him for... Basically, Basically defi- defamation. Yeah, and indicating yeah. who she was. Mm-hmm. But had she not come forward, I'm not sure we would have known who she was. Well, yeah. So, spoiler alert here. Yeah, go I'll ahead give you and a sec. fast forward 30 seconds a couple times on your podcast app or on mm-hmm. YouTube. So, here's the thing. Realistically, there shouldn't have been a way to track her down because, at least as far as she claims, there were no actual uh, trials or anything. So, you couldn't look that up by a public record. And the show ends, right, with... Saying that she was convicted and she did go to jail. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I think maybe that's why she's suing. Yeah. Which realistically, I mean, that's just, if you're not indicating that it's her, then you can have as much, you know, creative uh, license as you want with that. So I don't think she has a very strong case. I'm also not a lawyer. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, I think that like you were saying, it would be really hard to track her down because there were no, you know, public documents that you could have looked her name up from. Right. And so regardless mm-hmm. of the outcome of that trial, we'll see. 
I'm pretty sure like baby reindeer is going to be the new euphemism for stalking. Oh, for sure. I actually had a moment the other day when I was at the the uh, studio for the wolf um, and I was all alone, but I heard this noise and I was like, oh, damn, I just don't want to get baby reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, that was the thought that popped into my head. Uh-huh. And then I was like, I got to text that to Mike. That's funny. If you don't know, Carly <laughs> does afternoons on 961 and 1021, the wolf. Where you'll find Post Malone and yeah. Morgan Wallen. Uh, I had some help. And Marshmallow and Kane Brown. Yes. Mm-hmm. Miles on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So far, my song of the summer. Yeah, you've been really into that. <laughs> yeah. All right, two more things before we go. There is now a documentary about Idaho called Potato. Huh. <laughs> Here's a little bit of the trailer. It premiered last week in Boise, Potato is an Idaho film project that was born out of post-pandemic ideas to capture our culture and what lies at the roots of Idaho, the people. It has a deeper meaning than just like potatoes. I wonder what made them specifically decide to look into that after the pandemic. Yeah, I mean, maybe they were, maybe it was one of those pandemic passion projects. Right. Like so many Mm -hmm. podcasts started in 2020 Mm -hmm. and then ended in like 23. Yeah, right. Kind of fizzled out right about (laughs) then. Like we started a podcast at exactly the wrong time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, right at the surge of all of them. But the trailer looks interesting. I'd like to see it. It only played at the Egyptian Theater in Boise. And let's be real, it's probably a bunch of Boise kids. Oh, probably. I think the farthest east I saw was there's a dude jumping off the Perrine Bridge. Mm -hmm. That's the one in Twin Falls. Right. I didn't see any East Idaho stuff in the trailer, but the trailer is only 60 seconds long. Right, right. So thepotatomovie.com, link in post. If you want to watch the trailer for yourself, I think it's also on YouTube. Um, And there's two reviews. Oh, wow. On IMDb. Well, but like... Was it the people who made it who reviewed it? I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking the same thing. One gave it 8 out of 10. One gave it 7 out of 10. Oh, so they were trying to make it seem like it wasn't right? them. But the, the actual content of the documentary was either critical or tongue-in-cheek critical. Okay. Because one person said, I watched the whole thing and they really didn't say anything about potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I mean, they should have yeah. had like Spud Days and Shelley. Something, yeah. The Potato Museum in Blackfoot. Right, right. And then there was, I think to my earlier point about it's probably Boise-centric, mm-hmm. there was a Northern Idaho person saying, hey, I live in Northern Idaho and there wasn't much of us up here either. Right, yeah. If you're new to Idaho or new to this show, and because we really have had a lot of followers and a lot of subscribers just in the last week. I know, which is so exciting, by the way. Tell all your friends. If if you're one of them, welcome. Come on in. <laughs> crack Bring a, a bunny. Crack open a cold Ollie Pop. And, Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Although I realized it has stevia in it. Not my favorite, yeah. but just a little note for you, <laughs> Ollie Pop. But um, thank you so much for uh, watching slash listening, whatever you're doing. And being a part of our tribe that we're slowly and painfully building. And you've made it a little more pleasant. So if you're just joining us on this show, this is Idaho in the shape of an L on my forehead where it belongs. And we have three capitals. Here's Boise. Mm -hmm. Here's Spokane outside. And here's Salt Lake City outside Mm -hmm. in Utah. Am I doing that? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) We do. We have three capitals because the Rocky Mountain, first of all, we're weird shaped. And then the Rocky Mountains kind of slice us in half diagonally. Uh Uh-huh. Like a sandwich with a bite taken out of it or something. (laughs) Right. Yeah, basically. That's why sometimes you don't see a lot of Southeast Idaho. You just see East Idaho because there is no Northeast Idaho. Yeah, not not really. Okay, anyway. So a lot of things that happen in Boise, we're not a part of. Mm -hmm. Northern Idaho is not a part of. And I wouldn't be surprised if this entire documentary reflects that. Right. Well, and you know, that's kind of a shame because I feel like East Idaho has a lot more variety in the um, cultures around here because you've got Sun Valley, which is kind of posh, you know, and then you've got um, Preston, our claim to fame with Napoleon Dynamite, uh, which I think is portrayed very well on that. Uh, And then you've got Idaho Falls, which I feel like a lot of folks tend to travel through. We're hoping soon it'll be two. Yeah, we are second 
Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it goes Boise, Idaho Falls, and then right. the other cities that don't matter. Kidding. Right. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, but because we're sort of, a, I mean, we started out as sort of a hub city, I feel like we have a little bit more diversity than somewhere like Boise does. Well, as someone who lived in Boise for a month, by the way. A month? A whole month? Yeah, it's back when I was doing acrobatics. Oh, that's so right. I just went there for a month to yeah. just, I was doing aerial acrobatics at a studio there, and then... Came back. I lived in northern Idaho. I lived in Lewiston. Right. That's true. For like nine months. Mm-hmm. Long enough to learn that it was the first capital of Idaho. Mm-hmm. And that it's kind of stinky. Yeah. Love you, Lewiston. But that paper mill potlatch, if you've ever lived in a town with a paper mill, especially one that's in a valley like that. Yeah, Woo-wee. that's <laughs> Did you just do a Mr. Poopy Bubble? Yes, I did. <laughs> Ooh-wee. It's stinky. <laughs> Almost as stinky as Mr. Poopy Butthole. <laughs> You've been watching too much Rick and Morty. <laughs> I have. Where's season eight? Right. Is that the one we're on? Right. Yeah, yeah it should yeah. be. We want to leave you with this. Last week, we made mention of a rumor about whisperings and murmurings regarding getting the good stuff uh-huh. here in Idaho. We're talking about the Wyoming fireworks. Oh. The aerial ones. What would you think? <laughs> oh, no, not Make, that. Making a joke. <laughs> not that. Saw okay. plenty of that on our trip to Bozeman, Montana, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. Yeah. But yeah, those good fireworks. The good fireworks. Mm-hmm. The rumor was, oh, it's near I pull. So mm-hmm. I pulled out of my driveway. <laughs> and down Woodruff, you head north. Mm-hmm. You head out of town toward Highway 20 on Woodruff. Right about where it curves, you'll see this. Mm-hmm. Acme Discount Fireworks. That big old one. Indeed, yeah, with the gorilla, uh-huh. or at least it was inflated when I went. It's a big white tent. I wonder if that gorilla is like their open sign. It could be. You know, like they blow them up when it's time to go in, then yeah. deflate them when it's all done. Yeah. If that gorilla's puffed up, mm-hmm. if that gorilla's popping, yeah. so are our fireworks. Right. Well, not here in I not here in Idaho at least. No, and that's <laughs> so that's what we're gonna get to here. <laughs> They do have the fireworks that are, the yeah, big, I guess, illegal. Yeah, yeah, the big go boom boom ones. <laughs> to light <laughs> yeah. here in Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. So you can't light them. I'm sorry, I got something in my <laughs> eye. The rumor was, oh, they make you sign a waiver. It's They do make you sign something. You've mm-hmm. got to whip out your ID, put your driver's license number on it, your name, your address, your phone number. Oh, wow. It's more of a, and I'll show it to you. Let's bring it up on the screen right here. Mm -hmm. It's more of an agreement Mm -hmm. that you are doing what they did to bring them here, which is transport them to another Mm -hmm. state where they are legal before you light them off. Right. So does everybody get that? I want to be very clear about this. Mm -hmm. because, And here's why. I want them to keep doing this. Yeah, same. We're not chucking them under the bus. Mm -hmm. We're uh, encouraging their behavior. Yeah. They found a legal loophole. Mm -hmm. And they're using it. And I think it's wonderful. Right. Take a look at some of these fireworks. They got some great names like Out of This World, Black Mamba. Oh, yeah. We've actually used the Black Mamba one before. I remember seeing that packaging. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Not not here in town. No, no, no. Of course not. Of course not. (laughs) Scream Louder, Rainbow. Ooh, Sprinkle Donuts. Ooh. Out of Nowhere, Majestic Waterfall. And I guess they had sort of a deal where if you bought one or two, and I asked them, they're pricey. Yeah. Like some of them for mm-hmm. just one box is two, 300 bucks. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they have a deal like where if you buy one, you get a free cake. Mm-hmm. And I said, something tells me that's not just um Like, you know, bread and carbs. ice cream and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, and bread said, and ice cream. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> right. And she said, no, no, no. Those, those are the ones where you light them once and they shoot off like 50. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they've got the good stuff right here in town. Mm -hmm. Acme Discount Fireworks. We love what you're doing. And that's why you are IFAF this week. Mm -hmm. Chris Pie 5. 21 Finger Gun Salute. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. Rockets Red (laughs) Glare. Bombs Bursting in Air. Mm -hmm. (laughs) After our short jaunt to Wyoming. Obviously. Of course. Of course. And Chef's (laughs) Kiss. To you. To you. <laughs> you know, I do kind of wonder if um, there's a little bit of a premium on it for doing the transporting, some of the transporting there for you. There might be a reasonable transport fee attached yeah. to these things. Yeah. Yeah. Which I feel is fair. 
So that's our show. Go and have a happy fourth. Thank you so much for subscribing and following and liking our stuff everywhere. Please continue to do that. Matter of fact, there's actually a special link in our description that will help automatically subscribe you to our YouTube. Yes, that's what we're pushing right now is YouTube subscriptions. Mm -hmm. We want it. We need it. We have to hit 500 for whatever algorithmic reason. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's interesting now after doing this for about a year... Um, we, I'm seeing they're, they're letting us slide up into the, uh, algorithm a little bit easier now with our posts. Good. I would so that's so. cool. I mean, you know, what? We're... after 50 weeks of going, what the hell are we doing this for? <laughs> yeah. We are here to entertain the masses. Yeah. You know, we just want, we just want to do a little something. <laughs> we just want to chit chat with y'all. <laughs> Although it, YouTube in particular completely nerfed our last video about, um, the, uh, what the madam's letter was to the debt oh, collector. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. What was the punchline on that again? So it was a uh, uh, madam to a landlord. Okay, right. And she basically said, hey, sorry, I'm going to be late on my uh, rent uh, because I'm feeling sick. But once I'm back on my back, I'll get you paid. <laughs> <laughs> More or less. <laughs> All right. We'll leave you with that. Happy 4th. <laughs> Stay fresh, cheese bags. Mm -hmm. Don't blow off your fingers. <laughs> <laughs>